Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about one of my favorite topics and one of the questions that I get asked about all the time, and that is regarding hair loss on a plant-based or vegan diet. Now, I have a lot of personal experience in this department. I started losing my hair in my late teens, and throughout the years, I have done a lot of experiments, I have tried many products, and different lifestyles so I'm gonna put all of that knowledge and experience together into this one little video and share it with you to hopefully help you out if you're somebody that is dealing with hair loss whether you're on a plant-based diet or not so stick around because it's gonna get hairy All right guys, I wanna start this off by giving you just a few statistics that might help to put this all into perspective for you. According to the American Hair Loss Association, who knew we had such a thing, two thirds of men by the age of 35 and 85% of men by the age of 50 will experience some sort of hair loss. About 25% of those that experience hair loss will see it begin before the age of 21. Now let me point out here that these statistics are not coming from a vegan or plant-based population. These are coming from a population of people that are eating a meat and dairy and processed food centered diet. They're not getting enough exercise, they're not getting enough sunlight, and they don't have the best emotional and mental health according to the statistics on antidepressant use in this country. So I also wanted to see which countries were experiencing the most hair loss. And I found a list of the top 11 countries that have the highest rates of hair loss. And so starting at 11 down to one, we've got Russia, Canada, the Netherlands, Poland, Italy, the United States, the UK, France, Germany, Spain, and the Czech Republic. So then I wanted to see, well, what are their diets like? And it turns out that all of these countries are very heavy meat and dairy consuming countries. Now, according to Mayo Clinic, hair loss can result from a variety of things, including heredity or your genes, hormonal changes, medical conditions, and medications. Now I wanna take those four things and point out that these are all heavily influenced by our diet and lifestyle. It's the food. It's, <laughs> it's the food. Now, heredity or your genes are not a determining factor in what is expressed in your body. So epigenetics tells us that the environment is what allows our genes to express or to not express a predisposition. What we learned along the way, we could turn on and turn off cancer. Turn it on by increasing casein consumption, turn it off by decreasing or replacing it with plant protein. That was a really exciting thing, that we could take nutrition and turn cancer on and off. I mean, that, that was pretty startling and really brought into question eventually, what role do genes play in cancer formation? What role do other environmental chemicals play as carcinogens? You know, all that kind of stuff. How does nutrition compare? And it turns out the contrition is, is the heart of the matter. So if, if we're keeping our bodies alkaline, full of antioxidants and electrolytes, full of fiber, and all the things that help our bodies to function correctly and to remove the acidic waste, then the negative predispositions that we may or may not have don't have a chance to express themselves because they are in a healthy environment that promotes healthy, thriving cells and a healthy, thriving body. Hormonal changes, extremely influenced by our diet and lifestyle. If we're consuming animal products such as meat and dairy, those are full of exogenous hormones. So hormones from the outside of our body coming from the secretions and the flesh of other living creatures 
that produced those hormones. The problem is that the hormones get into our food supply. Endogenous steroid hormones in food of animal origin are unavoidable, as they occur naturally in these products. It's not a matter of injected hormones, which are banned in places like Europe in order to protect consumers' health. They're part of animal metabolism. And so, as a matter of fact, you know, all foodstuffs of animal origin contain steroid hormones. And the presence of hormones in food has been connected with several human health problems. So that is why meat and dairy are not necessarily something that you would want to be eating if you're concerned about hormonal imbalances or hair loss. Uh, medical conditions, we know that diet and lifestyle play a huge role in preventing most of our top killers, most of our chronic diseases that we see in this country and in the world, really. And medications, you know, if you're eating a healthy, plant-based, whole foods diet, there's a good chance that you're gonna lower your risk for being on most medications. Now, with that all being said, I truly think that the overall cause of most of our hair loss issues comes down to one thing, and that is the condition of our two main fluid systems of the body, which is the blood and the lymph. The blood is the supplier of nutrients and oxygen. It's basically the kitchen of our body. Then we have our lymphatic system, which is what cleans our cells, what picks up the trash and carries it away to the eliminative organs. And so these two systems work together to keep our cells healthy and keep everything flowing smoothly. So when they start to get acidic, they start to kind of clump up. They don't flow as smoothly, and it makes it more difficult for nutrients and oxygen to get to the cells. And we have these little tiny microcapillaries that lead to things like our scalp and other areas of the body that it's only big enough for one cell, one blood cell, to make it through at a time. And if that starts to clog up, then we're going to start to see a deficiency in nutrients and oxygen to the root system of our scalp and our hair, and that can cause hair loss. And the same goes for our lymphatic system. When the lymphatic system starts to get acidic, it starts to slow down. And when it slows down, it's already a fairly slow system, much slower than the blood system. So when the lymphatic system slows down, we start to have an accumulation of acid waste and toxins building up around the cells, and this causes inflammation. And if it's there long enough, it can lead to cell damage and cell death. And so that is a major problem as far as keeping our cells healthy and our entire bodies healthy. So making sure that we have a healthy, flowing lymphatic system is essential for not only hair loss and hair health, but also the health of every other tissue and cell in our body. So making sure we're getting enough exercise, we are keeping our bodies hydrated, we are eating a high fiber diet, we're avoiding animal products and other highly concentrated sources of protein. We are breathing deeply. We are making sure that we're keeping our colon and our kidneys healthy. These are our two main eliminative pathways, and that is how we keep our lymphatic system flowing smoothly. So a couple bowel movements a day is perfect. Um, you're filtering through your kidneys. All these things are very important to keep our lymphatic system doing its job correctly. Now guys, like I said, I started to lose my hair when I was in my late teens. And I didn't start on my plant-based vegan diet until I was about 25 years old. So my plant-based vegan diet had nothing to do with my hair loss. I was losing my hair while I was eating an abundance of animal products. So to think that eating animal products is what is keeping your hair is just crazy. It is not what is keeping your hair. If anything, it is clogging your lymphatic system and clogging those microcapillaries leading to your hair, and that is why you're starting to experience hair loss. Now, hair loss was one of the main factors in what pushed me towards this lifestyle, and it is what kept me motivated to try and find a reason why it was happening. I didn't want to accept it. I, I did everything that I possibly could that I could think of 
to make it stop or to reverse it. Um, a couple examples of things that I did, and some of them might seem a little crazy, but hey, I was desperate and I was looking for any possible solution to fix this problem because I did not want to lose my hair. So I used pretty much any shampoo out there that claimed to have the ability to stop and reverse my hair loss. I was also taking basically any supplement that I could find that claimed to be hair healthy and that could prevent uh, hair loss. I was taking pharmaceuticals. I was putting concealers on my scalp, you know, basically makeup on my scalp to make it look uh, less like there was hair loss there. Um, also, I had surgery. I did a hair transplant, uh, which cost like, I don't even remember, $5,000 or something like that. It was just crazy. And, you know, it didn't really do anything. So I was very, I felt so defeated. I just, nothing seemed to work. And I truly believe it's because I never was addressing the primary cause, which was my stagnant lymphatic system. So um, that is why I really wish people would start to improve their diet, improve their lifestyle to help get circulation flowing in their body in both their blood and their lymphatic system. And that could really make a big difference. So alkalizing your body, flooding your system with alkaline minerals and antioxidants and enzymes and another thing that I was doing were things like headstands and I would like lean my body off of my bed so that uh, I would get a blood rush to my head and hopefully get some nutrients to my scalp and I was I was doing all that but I was missing the point that it's the lymphatic system and the blood, they were stagnant because of my acidic diet. And, and it was just something I was completely oblivious of. Now I know, and now I have taken care of a lot of the health issues that I was dealing with at that time. The only thing is my hair loss, which has, I do believe, has completely stopped receding and falling out and thinning. Um, but it just hasn't grown back yet. I'm still trying different things to try and uh, kind of um, boost that process. I, I'm trying out using uh, onion juice. So I'm actually blending up some onion uh, a couple times a week and I'm putting it on my scalp. I read that that might help. Um, now I know that's, that's like a treatment-based thinking, but uh, I've been on a, a very clean diet for the majority of the time for the last six months six months uh six years so i feel like i'm willing to look into some other ways to help to uh spark some regrowth um that's really uh something that you know i'm not obsessed with anymore i honestly am not that concerned about it but it would be nice to kind of see some new sprouts popping up here and there so it's just something to play with while I continue on my health journey and and just learning as much as I can about how to regenerate the body through detoxification and through natural living. So that's what's going on for me at this time. Uh, but yeah, that really covers pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. So if you have any other questions, definitely feel free to leave them down in the comment box. Um, also, please share your experience with hair loss and uh, plant-based diet and if it had any positive or negative effects. Um, I would really be interested to hear that. And if you have any tips or tricks on how to boost some regrowth, I think that'd be really interesting as well. So leave it all down below. I would love to read it all. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell to make sure you're getting all my latest videos. Um, and until next time, guys, always follow your raw intuition. Detoxify your mind and body Be the change you want to see Small steps towards living better
small steps to where I want to be. 